now there were two. So it's you and me, the team. That's what you say. It always ends up me and you. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's typical, isn't it? Me and you end up there. Come on, Dad, get involved in this podcast. <laughs> they fuck off somewhere. Yeah, I know. It's unbelievable. Crazy. Hey, but that's how it goes. I need to go to a happier place. I feel romantic. Don't half Aussie. Just go to bed, darling. <gasps> oh! All right, change the subject. I've got a bad tummy today, but I don't know what it must have been that baked potato you gave me last night. Oh God, Ozzy, I'm so sorry. It was burnt. It was like a bullet. It was bad. It, it was wasn't, it was a bit bad, but my tummy's playing for it today. Really woke me up at five thirty this morning. Well, it must have been the cheese I put on it. Maybe it was rotten cheese or something. She put cheese on it as well. Yeah. How did you put cheese on a fucking baked potato? What do you mean? You cut it when it's cooked, you cut it, and then you put some cheese in it. What did you cut that with a fucking chainsaw? <laughs> I know, it was like a brick. <laughs> Fuck, you know. So, after Christmas, our kids have abandoned us. Oh, well, here we go again. No, they'll be back. They're no up. baked potatoes this week. No baked potatoes, no kids. Um... Oh, it, 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 it always ends up being you at the end and holding the fort, you know. Today, we've yes. got some questions from our audience. This one is from Genesis. My question is for Ozzy. When did you know that Sharon was the one for you? Oh, when, when did I know Sharon was the one for me? Uh, well, I was attracted to Sharon for, for many years. We, we'd see each other in airports. And uh, at festivals and different things along, along the way. Oh, she had this infectious laugh. She was fun, you know. And then when I was in Black Sabbath, we, we were contemplating being managed by her father, who was a big manager at the time. And then I let, I got fired from Black Sabbath, and I thought, I'm done. I'll go back to England. And Sharon knocked at my, my hotel door one morning and says, I want to manage you. And I couldn't believe it. And then I thought, is, does she want me? <laughs> then we went to San Francisco. We were with another friend of ours, a guitar player called Gary Moore, and he, him and his girlfriend, and Ozzy and I went on a trip for a weekend to San Francisco. I thought I thought that was it. Then when you I thought, and when he said he was trying to find my room, we were in a hotel, but I had booked in under another name. And Ozzy couldn't find me in my room. All night I was so I was going to say, can I come and watch your telly? That was my pickup line back then. <laughs> Very sophisticated, yeah. Ozzy. I mean, we were, I, we were meant to be, you know, I think. Not looking back. We were meant to be together. Yeah, our lives kept crossing from... It, it, was, it was ridiculous. I'd go, oh, shit, there's Sharon. Kept bumping into each other every year or and so. And she, Sharon, used to date Tony Naomi before me. No, I didn't date. He was a friend. I didn't well, what, date well, him. You didn't date him, so you, you didn't go to fucking soccer matches with him? Uh, no, but I would go down and see the gigs and Tony would ask me if I wanted to come down, leave me tickets for the shows. and You'd you go know. to Leicester. Sorry? Drive, you'd drive up to Leicester to see him. Fuck you now, where did this one come from? All right, next question, please. This one is from Kathy. Hello, Osbournes. What two qualities can you both share about the other that has kept your love so alive, so strong, so powerful? Thank you for that, Kathy. One of the qualities for Ozzy is his sense of humor. Um always always had me laughing no matter what and still does can have we can be in the worst situation and deal with it but at the end we still manage to laugh about whatever it is Ozzy will turn it into humor and that's a great gift that he has he's a pain in the ass but he's never been a diva or pretended to be somebody he's not or because he was famous then he acted a certain way he's always been very true to who he really is and i really admire that about him and he's also very generous sharon is like my soulmate 
sometimes I love her, sometimes I don't love her, sometimes I'm angry with her, sometimes I'm, I'm crazy about her, sometimes I'm very jealous of her, sometimes I want to fucking kill her. <laughs> but through it all, at the end of the day, I love her more than anything in the world. I, I, I Put it this way, I couldn't live without her. Did I don't want to live without her. And my love for her now is bigger than it ever has been. I, we've had a rocky road. What I never could understand, and then they used to say, and they both lived happily ever after. That's a bunch of bullshit. Because cause when you get married, the most heaviest contract you will ever sign in your life. And people today just get married. Oh, well, let's get married. And then three weeks later, they get divorced. You know, a marriage is, is a, buy, a deal with someone. And, you know, you, see, you fall off the wagon, but you get back on again, you know. It's it's weird because so many marriages, when they end, they say, oh, our careers took us away from each other and, you know, we spent too much time apart. But that's only for one time in your life or it happens, you know, quite regularly. But that's not the rest of your life. And marriage is meant to be for the rest Forever. of your life. So, yeah. death do us both. so when people say, oh, you know, we're, our work took us away from each other, well, it's not going to do that in the next 40 years, is it? You know, I found, I found that Sharon and I have done along the way. From now and again, we've renewed our vows. That's a pretty good, good tool to have because you forget what what what, what, what the, the deal is. You know, oh, the missus, oh, I've fucking done this wrong. She's going to bollock me now. <laughs> you know, you make mistakes. You do some stupid things. But, I mean... Do, you know, it, it's, it's a two-way street. It is. These last five years, I've been hell, and I've been a pain in the heart trying to try and recover. But my family have been so fucking wonderful. My wife has worked her ass off trying to help me get my back on my feet. And my kids have been great as well. That is the gift that you get when you, when you, when you have a relationship, a marriage. For better, for worse, in sickness and in health. People want to be the better. They don't, they don't want the worse. They don't, they don't want the health. They don't want to be there for the sickness. But when I was sick with cancer, you used to carry me to the bathroom and back. But that's that's what, yeah, I'm, that's that's what, what it's you about. Do. Oh, you, don't, you don't think twice. Love is a, such an overused word. But we do love our dogs. The love I have for you and my kids. Is a love that you can't buy. You can't buy. And a dog's the only love you can buy. Yeah, it's true. Well, thank you, Kathy, for that question. Went down well. That was a good, good question. Okay, this next one is from Emma. Do you have a song that reminds each other of each other? And or did you have a wedding song? Would love to know. I know I have a song. Uh, that always when I, I listen to it, it touches my heart so much. And that one is Ozzy wrote, uh, Mama, I'm Coming Home. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that song. We didn't have a a, a wedding song because no, no, we no. didn't really have a typical oh, wedding. I want to know about when get, get a tender jail. <laughs> what? I like that one. Was it jail has struggle. No, trying to be funny. No, we never, we never did, because we got married on the beach in Hawaii. No, we got married on the fucking beach. No, in initially, fact. initially when oh, we yeah. got married, so we had Hawaiian music playing. So it wasn't like we had a wedding band I, um, or anything. My sister Jean came with my mum, didn't she? Yeah, she did. And your mom. So there's no song that reminds you of me. Our, our life is music, so crazy trying. That first Blizzard album is is, is very special for me and you. Yeah. I mean, people sit after and say to me, do I have a favourite album? I mean, an album, if I'll go back to when I was making it. What, 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 was it fun? Was it a drag? Was I happy or sad, you know? Because it's like a, I'll go back to where I was. When yeah, when you made it. Record, yeah. Those albums were fun. Oh, yeah. We had some fun there. Yeah, we did. Randy was a good guy. The best. Our wedding I, day I, was I, very I, I, unusual. My stag night 
Oh, hold on here. You got absolutely shit-faced. You never even got out of the van. I don't know where you were going, some club. Oh, and uh, you never even got out the van because you were already so drunk on the way there. Well, I had a good time, I think. <laughs> In the van I don't by remember yourself. the wedding, you know. No, because you were, you were out of it and you never even came in on the wedding night. That's when I told you the manager called and said, your husband is laying in the hall. Will you come and get him? And I said, no, I won't. So you spent the money not on your own? What? Who the fuck else was I going to spend it with? You were outside comatose in you the hallway. Let me in. You couldn't even stand to knock the door. And then in the morning, you came in and went, oh, uh, I've left something downstairs. I've got to go. And you went back for a second round of drinks. I must have been having fun. Then. Yeah, I think you were. It was very enlightening. Hey, everyone. It's Jack Osborne. And the Osborne's podcast is sponsored by Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. You can literally turn $10 into $250 in just a few taps. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and then place your entry. What I've been loving is Prize Picks reboot policy. It means that your entry stays in play even if one of your players gets injured. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So the thing I love most about Price Picks is how easy it is. The user interface is super simple. It's just like playing a video game. It literally is. You just pick your more or less on the projected stats. You can do it even during the game. So go to pricepicks.com forward slash Osborns and use the code Osborns for your first deposit match up to $100. That's right, pricepicks.com forward slash Osborns. Use the promo code Osborns for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Okay, this one is from Anne. My question for Sharon and Ozzy is, what is your perfect date night look like? What? Uh, Anne is asking, what does our, our perfect date night look like? Oh, oh. Go on. Go on. You're silent. Oh, oh, we don't have many, do we? We're always together. So When we work together, we live together. Well, well when I go when I go back to England, when I when I do my trips back to England, I think you got a little little boy, boyfriend over there. You go to. Oh God, <laughs> please! I have enough problems in my life. I don't need that. But when I go back to England every couple of months, then we have you know for two weeks we're away from each other. But other than that, we're always together. If we go out, it's together. Everything. We, we go occasionally go to the uh, hotel for lunch. Yeah, there's a hotel here that um, Ozzy and I have been going to for a hundred years. We go out, we? Yeah, so we always go to the same place. We go to the Beverly Hills Hotel and we eat, and sometimes we'll stay there, have an occasional night away from home, and we stay at the hotel. And uh, it's like a second home to us here. So mm. that's that's basically, we I think, our... We went to Hawaii last year. Uh, year before. No, let's last year. No, nope, we never went last year. We went the we year went before. Last year. Kelly was pregnant, don't you remember? Kelly was pregnant. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That, see, that's how quickly the time goes. You don't realize. Wow. When we went to see one of Ozzy's doctors and when we got there, he said, how long is it since I've seen you? And we're going, mm, four months, six months. And then he comes back and he says, no, actually, it was nearly 13 months ago. And we're like, oh, fuck, time, time, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't seem that long ago when I had my 17th birthday. I know. It's like, you know, it's like the days drip by and the years fly. I mean, the time is, I'll be dead soon. Shut up. We all will. We're all going the same way. No one's going backwards. So thank you for that question. <laughs> We're ending it on a happy note. We're all going to die soon. This is a question from Dana. Go on, Dana. 
I was dating a guy who would put ketchup on his well-done steak when we would go to nice steakhouses. And it was very embarrassing. Should I have considered that as a reason to break up with him? Put ketchup on his steak. Yeah, that's a bit hard. You know, my husband used to put ketchup on his steak. Oh, you (laughs) don't. I know that certain restaurants and certain chefs are so against ever using ketchup on anything, and What's I wrong get with that. But you go to a fucking restaurant, and you, 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 if they got ketchup and you want it, you you should be allowed to put it on. Well, some, you're you're buying, pot paying for the fucking steak. I know that, but now you know it's like people who are like professional foodies and certain restaurants it's don't just, even have ketchup. A of shit. I know, I know, I know. We're very basic with our food. We don't really like fancy food and so I mean, uh, we're very you, simple you, with what we eat. If you buy a steak in a restaurant and you, can, you should, if you want to bring your own, you should be allowed to do it. But you notice now in restaurants there are so many restaurants that don't even put salt and pepper on the table. You have to ask for it. Fuck you know. I know. So, it's. I don't, going? Dana. I the don't. World, the world's going nuts. Yeah, it is. But I don't think that's a reason to break up with anybody because they put ketchup on their steak. Yeah, that's a bit him hard. To, to jump. Shush. Okay. Next one is from Shauna. What is the most romantic thing you guys have done for each other? Oh. Oh, that's a good one. I'm I, 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 I'm a bit of a romantic, aren't I? You are very romantic, very, very romantic you are. For me, Ozzy used to um, come in in the morning and bring me breakfast and he would pick flowers, pick the flowers from the garden and he'd write me little notes and I'd save them all on my breakfast tray and I used to think that was so lovely. I mean, that's, uh, I, mean I know it's probably sloppy and slurpy, but, you know, Every now and again, you got to tell each other, you, well, you know, I love you. Because people s- stop saying nice things. Oh, get me, make me a coffee, get me my breakfast. No matter how long you, you've been married, you, you got to tell your wife you love her, buy her dinner or not, or take her out. But it's always that way at the beginning, isn't it? People are always so it's, nice to each other in the beginning. In bed and whatever. Then it all... Fizer, what? Well, that, gets, that gets old after a while. <laughs> for some people. Yeah. Well, not for us. No. What's the nicest thing I've done for you? Stop spending more money. Okay. Can't do that. Um, when she goes out shopping, she'll see something. Oh, I see like that. She brings me home stuff all, all the time. Well, you deserve gifts all I mean, the time. I mean, I, I, I've started venturing away from my tracksuits. If you, if you have, have you noticed that? I? Yes, I have. If you made an effort today, yeah. definitely. That's so, a good question. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Dana. Okay, next question is from Amanda. My question is: What is the greatest obstacle that you two have faced and are proud to have overcome together? Well, there's so many. Uh, I was a, a bit of infidelity on my part, which I was, I was, I was very embarrassed about. And I still am I'm embarrassed. Um, quiet, the, you've the, gone the, quiet. The I think it was probably Ozzy's drinking. We don't have to deal with that anymore, thank God. But I think I it's the drinking. I just smoke a lot. Yeah, well, I was always telling you to stop smoking in front of the kids and everything, and then you used to say, stop bullying me. I'm like, I'm just asking you not to smoke. <laughs> I think we've gotten closer as we got older, you know. Yeah, of course we have. I mean, it's definitely better than ever, as far as I'm concerned. It's better now than it has ever been. That's the way it's meant to be. It's matured proper. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You have bad times. You know what I mean? As I said in the beginning, you have bad periods. And you think, what the fuck is going on? Why don't I get my fair share of the good things? And you feel, you know, yeah. I think it's hard for any couple to live together for years and years and years and not get on each other's well, I mean, nerves. I mean, it's you know, human you know, nature. What? 
What happened to 42 years? No, we've been together actual 44 years this year. That's just unbelievable. I know. That's, I mean, it's gone so quickly. And we had some fun along the way. I mean, baby, I do love you. I love you too, and it's been one hell of a ride so far. Oh, it's, <laughs> having kids is so else, especially our kids. You say you say kids, they're adults, they're old, our old kids. But we still don't always be our kids, and our babies give us their babies now. They're golden now. But that's what I say. the The only good thing about getting old is to have grandchildren. I don't get to see them as much as I could. Yeah, should. your other grandchildren, because yeah. they're, they're in England, yeah. Okay, this one's from Jess Marie. Hi, Ozzy and Sharon. What advice could you give a newly engaged couple who are in their early 20s? I would say wait a while before you go for the marriage. Stay engaged for a, for a, a while. Wouldn't you, sir? Yeah, I thought exactly the same thing in your early 20s. Yes, yeah, stay engaged, live with each other, but don't rush and get married. Make, make sure, because when you're in your early 20s, there's so much that people want to do with their so, lives. Especially and... now, there's so you, 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 they say you're 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 an adult. You, you're not an adult. Yeah, you... have some have some um, life unmarried before you get married it's you know you've got your entire life to be with him so so don't rush into anything no there's so much so many things so much things to do there's so much temptation and yeah yeah when, um, you're, when you're 21 you're not an adult of course you're not so, do you no nope, not at all not at all early 30s late 20s yeah i'm glad that i never got married early I know I am. <laughs> okay, good luck with your engagement. Good luck. I hope it works. Oh, first guy we've got, Johnny. Okay, let's hear it. I've been with my girlfriend for nine years now, and I bloody can't stand her. How on earth do you keep the fire going? Especially in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, my God, Johnny, you're funny. What's that? <laughs> Johnny says he's been with his girlfriend nine years and he can't bloody stand her. <laughs> oh, leave. I think he was being sarcastic. I don't think he meant it. If, if, if you did mean it, John, leave. <laughs> Get somebody you want to be with. Because if you don't like her and she thinks you do, that's a bit unfair. Yeah, I th I think that if you, you say that, how do you keep it going, especially in the bedroom, then she's not the one for you. So good luck with that. Okay, Hunter, what's your question? I just wanted to ask Sharon a silly little question. What is it like knowing that some of the best love songs ever written are about her? I was wondering what her thoughts were. Oh, it's an amazing feeling to think that you can move someone to write such a you know beautiful songs and uh it's it's there forever and after i'm gone my kids will have it and my grandkids will will have that music and know why it was written and it's a, a great feeling kelly, you know. you're going to write a song for kelly i'm going to write one for kelly yeah that will be nice be lovely yeah it's it's a really um special gift you know to have a song written or a poem written about you that other people enjoy too it's um it's an amazing gift okay this question's from sessie hi my name is sessie and i have a question for sharon how do you separate being a wife and then being you know a business partner a manager to aussie especially during the the addiction kind of a era how do you were able to separate both like your personal life and work hmm. thank you sassy it's um a very hard job actually and and ozzy will tell you many times he would say to me are you speaking to me as a manager or a wife because if you really cared about me, you wouldn't make me do this, whatever it was I was asking him to do. So it does get blurred lines. And oh, My line was, 
Oh, you speak to me as a wife, but I, I was a fucking asshole of a man. <laughs> it's yeah, you get blurred lines with it because you want you want to do the right thing, and say if Ozzy wasn't you know feeling well, and I'm like, you can't cancel. You've got to go on. You've got to do this. You can't let people down. And then he would say, what about my feelings? It comes with a, a lot of pressure doing both, but somehow we managed to keep it going, and and it's it's worked. But it but it is blurred lines. Oh, this one's anonymous. Hi, Ozzy and Sharon. What is something that you would encourage people in today's culture to better their marriage? Well, Mr. Anonymous, um, listen, it's people throw in the towel too too easily. It's it's like Everybody's standards now or expectations are so high on marriage. You don't have to get married, I don't think, anymore. Ma- marriage is a thing of the past. Do you think so? I I still think that especially women, they want they want the marriage. They want the yeah, but, I mean, the it, full but, commitment. But, but you don't have to get married. No, you don't but have the, to. The philosophy I have, but don't give up at the first bad turn, you know. Yeah, people do give in too easily and it's like nothing to be married three, four times. I don't know how people can do that. Set up home with another one and this is oh, my... Oh, oh, I, oh, I couldn't do it. Me. I couldn't twice, do it. I've been married twice in my life. I've said to you many times, if, you ever, if we ever did split, I wouldn't fucking get married again. Fuck that. To so invest all that time into a... I mean... Meryl Streets just got married after someone like 40, No, divorced. It's divorced after 40 something years. Why? Maybe no. she wants her freedom. Who knows? You know, people. I mean, it's a bit fucking light. <laughs> I always think that people's relationships are so interesting. I get obsessed oh, I, with I, watching yeah. people's relationships, they're all a bit crazy. I know we're crazy. That's that's expected. But well, we know we're crazy. Okay, this is from Leah. I was wondering if you were spending an evening together um, at home alone, what takeout or delivery would you order? Um, love you guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Leah. Okay, it goes like this: it's either pizza, burritos, chicken salad. Sharon don't Aussie. cook, so everything we eat is. Take away food anyway. Yeah. And like I said before, we like very simple food. We're not like foodies. Our daughter, she's on this vegan thing and it tastes like fucking prison food. That's <laughs> our eldest daughter, Amy. She's She's been um, a non-meat eater for so many years. Fuck, you know. We do spend a lot of time on our own now at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, you know, we go to bed very early and watch, I watch my iPad. YouTube, and Shannon's got one TV but it's under the bed. And my phone and my iPad. I go yeah, from yeah. the three. One thing is with Sharon, she is always, always on the phone. And I saw a T-shirt the other day. It said, "I wish you looked. I wish you. I wish you looked at me as much as you look at your phone." Yeah. yeah she's on the phone all day and all fucking night. My wife has withdrawal symptoms. If you can't find the thing. Oh, now listen at you. You, you, you were the one that would say to me, "Those phones are so rude. I hate them. They're rude." And who is always on his phone? No, it's, I, I, what I do find to, to do is text people because it, it, it takes the time away waiting for you to get off your phone, <laughs> and I don't let someone argue with you. Yeah, blame me. Okay, that's it, Leah. Thank you. Next question is from Juan. Asi and Sharon, do you guys still love each other as the first time since you guys met? Oh, I, I, I love her more. I love my husband so much more than when we first met. It's um. I was a bad boy for many years. The love has just got better, deeper, and um, we're blessed to have found each other. I mean, it must, it must really suck when, when, when people have, like, affairs for, like, 10 years and then, and then they get found out. That must really hurt. I can only imagine. It's it's 
heartbreaking. It breaks people, you know, and then mm. you have to fix yourself again. It's uh, unthinkable for me. I'm not interested. <laughs> Moving right along, Juan. Okay, question from Jacob. How did you guys manage your relationship, home life, with Ozzy's touring life? It was tough, and the way we managed it was to all be on the road together. And when the kids were little, it was very easy to do that until they got to about... But, but, but you're my manager. You, you, most of the time, you're with me on the road anyway. Yeah, but the children too. How did we keep it going? So they came. They um, would come with us as uh, much as we, possible. We would, we, we would get our tours going to go, coincide with the... the School break. Yeah, we we, we would always tour I mean, she, in the when, summer. When Amy was born, we had, she's she's travelled more than anybody. She has Amy. Yeah, she used to have a crib in the back of the bus, and that was it. Amy, she went, she came to Japan. Oh, she came around the world with us about three times. You know, mm. it just. And yeah. then when they grew older, we got their got them their own bus. That's right. When we when the kids were older, they had their own bus with a nanny in there, and they were like, it was chaos. Fucking... It was the gremlin bus. They used to do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's probably the first time the kids, it's been known for a kids to have their own tour bus with their nanny. But yeah, our kids did. I, I took Jack on the road with me when he was a little guy. I mean, and. We're driving for for hours, and I'm thinking this kid's gotta be, gotta be missing his mom. And I got all sad, and that lump in my throat, and I felt really sad for him, you know. On his own. Yeah, <laughs> but he, he he was all right, you know. He loved going on the road with you. We used to help all the crew guys move oh, he, equipment, <laughs> and they used to give him a little flashlight and his pass. He loved it. And then he had that scooter. We used to go. On. Yeah. Oh. This question is from Misty. Let's hear it. What are your thoughts on migrating to Mars? What do you want to go to fucking Mars for? There's nothing there. Just take a, a car and drive to the fucking desert for a few weeks. It's the same. No, there's things that are alive in the desert. You can't breathe. You can't get a, It's freezing cold. What do you want to go there for? I've never been into um, space travel. I'm terrified. It's bad enough here, let alone there. So well, I've no, no wait, desire. So why are they? Why are they so bent on going to Mars? Because we Earth won't last. But Mars is fucked up already. <laughs> don't ask me anything. I'm still trying to figure out what a fucking black hole is. So don't ask me. I um, don't a black hole. <laughs> shut up. This is from Ricardo. My question is, who was the person that made each of you starstruck when meeting them in real life? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Beatle fan. When I first met Paul McCartney, it was like meeting Jesus Christ for me. And he was a very nice man. He was, he was a very nice man. When I got a Grammys last year, he, he phoned up with my, with my producer to, to congratulate me. And that was very, very... Very special. For me, it has to be Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Elizabeth Taylor, yeah. Yeah, she's, she was just amazing to meet her. And I wasn't disappointed because so many Robin times... Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Oh, God, yeah. Because when Sharon yeah. was sick with cancer, I felt bad about leaving her with just in the house, you know. So I, I got him to say, ask if Robin Williams would come, come and see her. But Sharon loved him. Oh, I absolutely was so in awe of his talent and his kindness. And he came in and he got into bed with me and told me jokes for a couple of hours. And it wasn't just like he popped his head around the door. Hi, how are you doing? And left. He was a good two hours with me and he was just amazing. Made me feel so good. Yeah, amazing man. So, okay, thank you for that question. This is from Teresi. If you could go back to a moment in time, what moment would that be? Uh, I would like to go back to the, the 20s. Yeah, I know. You you love that time. I know you watch all those old movies and you're fascinated oh, I mean, the 20s with that 30s, time. I mean, 30s and, and say, 
to 45 must have been pretty heavy. Yeah, but you didn't, you didn't, you, you've only seen it in movies and plays and I've things. Not, so, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, the history there. It must have been scary. Yeah, I, I don't know. If I could do anything, I'd go back to the 80s. Yes, yes, and the 80s. Yeah, 80s was a time, everybody was so nice. 70s and 80s, everybody was so nice. There was so much fun. Life was but, fun. But, but and... you know, all the creepy stuff that you've heard about now must have been going on then. I don't but... think it's as, as much as there is now, believe it's me. Everybody hates everybody else. It's ugly. It's just... Mm. Can you remember those times everybody was just having such great, fun everywhere in the world it was a great time to be alive i i often think of the kids that are kids right now in this ugly world that we live in but it's gone so quick the ages doesn't seem that long ago to me it's like 50 years i know <laughs> fuck that in the 80s i mean how much fun did we have oh every day well was... i mean the 70s too now it's like changes every fucking week. The phones, yeah, and the, the technology. But you know, in the seventies, it was albums. And it was great to have an album, a double sleeve album, and you could buy an album and read all the info. Now it's fucking you don't get that anymore. Yeah, but albums are coming back. People love having albums now. They do. But is it as, is it as good as it was? It's I mean, not. No, no. It's not as big. But it's, I mean, I mean, it's the definitely thing, the growing. Thing, the people don't don't want to buy albums. They, the, the album goes in the chart and it disappears. It's all about separate tracks now. People, you know, they don't want to buy a whole body of work. They'll take but, the, the tracks they like. The days of having a concept album are gone. Oh yeah. Like Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, kids. Today don't know what a concept album is. They've got no idea. Yeah. Okay, this is our last question coming up, and it's from Neil. Ozzy's probably beyond the realms of uh, Viagra. So my question is to Sharon. Do you know a good drill-do maintenance technician? Much love. What's his name? Neil, you're a little old pervert, aren't you? What was his question? He wanted to know if I know of a good <laughs> dildo maker. That's a bit rude, Neil. I don't need one. I got my husband. So thank you, Neil. That's, uh, that's the end of the show, I believe. Yeah, it is. And we some... had some great questions, Mrs. We did, mister. So it was... Uh, Great hearing everybody's voices too, and um, I love that loved... last question was a bit stupid. Oh, he's just a perv. He's, he he was probably playing with himself as he recorded it. But anyway, thanks everybody for the questions. Thank you, it's been great, great fun. I've had a lot of fun today, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And then there was Me and two. The Mrs. O. That's it, Mister and Mrs. I love you, Bobby. Love you too. And I love the questions. Thank you very much. What's left on your bucket list to do together as a couple? I want, I'd like to go to, I always wanted to go to the pyramids. Always. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Valley of I the Kings. I saw the uh, Mayan pyramids in Mexico. Yes. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. I would love to see the pyramids. I want to go on like a, a good driving holiday through Italy. Oh, yeah. that's just a, 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 I'd like to get a bus and go and spend a different... A, Get a, a tour night, bus, a, yeah. A couple of nights in a Remember when we stayed at that little hotel? Yeah, sure. Um, like Rick Rubin bought a, a little village. I know. We could go visit Rick on our trip, Portofino. Yeah, Portofino. I loved it there. The food, we love it, Italian food as well. Yeah, we do. That's the only thing I can cook is pasta, and I probably overcooked that. But you do. <laughs> I do, yeah, I know. I want to say thank you to everybody out there because we've hit over 200,000 subscribers. That's great. And I want to say thank you. We appreciate it. And um, everybody out there, like, hit, follow us, subscribe to us, and uh, hopefully we'll entertain you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank, you. thank Rumble great. and everybody. So Thank you. It's That's made so us very cool. happy. Yeah, it's great news. Thank you. 